have you have you put any thought into why that happens? Because my thought right now is that um, is that it that that pathway is how you make niacin from tryptophan, mm-hmm. and so I, I think that it's basically the body trying to make sure that the baby has enough niacin because chronic estrogen exposure would occur during pregnancy. Right. And, um, and so one, one thing that I've, the, when I was doing my niacin research, one thing that I found is that women, um, women seem to need more total niacin than men, but they oh, seem yeah. to be better at making niacin from protein and what's really interesting is that the studies that were done that were used to make the RDA, they weren't comparisons of men and women, but two of the studies were in men and two studies were in women. Mm. And the standard deviations, meaning how much variation there was person to person in how much niacin that they needed to normalize what they were looking at, mm-hmm. um, was way bigger in men than it was in women. And so one of the interesting things is that it seems like, and that is not, this is not a strong conclusion, but it's a, it's a, it's one worth talking about. It seems like in men, the ability to make niacin from tryptophan is not regulated at all. Mm -hmm. And it's largely because if you have too much tryptophan, you need to get rid of it down that pathway. Mm -hmm. And if your ability to completely burn it for energy is topped off, then quinolinate, which is neurotoxic, will build up unless you convert it to niacin. And Same so, with kynernic, right? And xanthernic. Yeah, well, yeah, everything that goes into that, mm-hmm. like once you start going down that pathway, um, you can build, uh, well, yeah, that, like if you had a backup in that, so kynernic and xanthernic are spilling off from higher up parts of the pathway. Right, that's so true. If you have a blo- if you have block in one of those parts, um, then if you have, too much tryptophan coming in, they will build up. Right. But if the block is not in those parts and tryptophan goes down, what it's ultimately doing is it's going to be completely Quinn. burned for energy or it's going to go into quinolinate, which is neurotoxic, mm-hmm. and then into, uh, into niacin. And so in men, imagine that most of that pathway is working fine. So you're not getting buildup of xanthronate and kynorenate. Mm-hmm. If you get down to completely burn the tryptophan for, en- for energy and suddenly your capacity to do that is blocked up, then at the very end of the pathway is where you have the quinolinate, which is a, a potential neurotoxic risk. It's not mm-hmm. that quinolinate is poisonous. It's like glutamate, like too much is bad. Right. And, right. So, and so niacin there is a way, making niacin from quinolinate is a way of making sure that you don't have neurotoxic levels of quinolinate building up. So it's like a safety valve. But, but estrogen dramatically increases this pathway and it increases the steps at the end that generate quinolinate even more than it increases the beginning of the pathway. And as a result, women have much better ability on average than men to make uh, niacin, niacin from tryptophan, but also they seem to have a much more consistent ability. In other words, in men, it, there's no regulation to it at all. And so huh. one man versus another man is really, really random. Whereas for women, there's variation, but it's it's in a much tighter range. And that, that variation is pr- like probably if you accounted for their estrogen levels, mm-hmm. probably that, that would really narrow the range down. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really, really tightly regulated by estrogen. Um, but, but, you know, if your estrogen levels are really, really high, and they're consistently high and you're not pregnant and you're not using the niacin for the baby mm-hmm. and um, and you're just exceeding the capacity to deal with that quinolinate, it seems like that's the condition where you have um, where you where you have uh, the potential for that quinolinate building up as right. a result of estrogen that's gonna do dirty, nasty things in the brain that it shouldn't be doing. Well, and think about the men too who are on who over aromatize um, I like, or, you know, maybe they're on just unregulated testosterone. Right. Right. And by unregulated, I mean, um, they're just on testosterone. You know, they're just, their doctor just ran a testosterone, just gave them testosterone. Maybe it's an injection. It's high dose. Here you go. And all of a sudden they're like, I feel like I felt good initially. And now I feel worse. I brain fog, right. I'm moody. I have this breast development. What's going on. It's like, well, you're just aromatizing it all to estrogen. And then if you have that same pathway, Right. Yeah, that's a really great point. In fact, in one of these AMAs uh, a, few, a couple months ago, one of the first ones I did, uh, there was a man 
who was asking why his B6 deficiency markers were so high. And the B6 oh. deficiency markers in the urine are the things we're talking about right here that spill out yep. of the pathway. Yep. And I was asking him a few different questions, maybe you're eating too much protein, this and that. And then I mentioned something about estrogen regulating it. And he said, oh, by the way, my estrogen is really high. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. I, you know, I was w. like, I was, I was um, inappropriately excluding that because of the sex issue. But yeah, estrogen is not a, not a, just a female thing. Uh, For all, sure. Obviously. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then that whole cycle just keeps going round and round. Cause the, the one marker, the xanthirinate, which is a B6 dependent, um, it'll complex with insulin and then it'll make somebody have higher glucose right now. They're on the track to developing insulin resistance and diabetes, which further increases estrogen, especially in men. And, and then now you're back on the same circle. Mm. 